What's up, chess player? Welcome to the journey to get masters, a place where you can improve every aspect of your chess game. And I hope you are ready for a tremendously valuable video because Magnus Carlsen himself is going to teach you today three extremely useful chess principles that's going to level up your strategic understanding. It's one of the most instructive games Magnus Carlsen has ever played, and I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to incorporate those principles into your own game so you can improve your chess today. It's 2004 on the street that Magnus Carlsen is a 14-year-old, almost 2500-rated player and everybody understands, well, this guy is going to be something special. In this game he plays as white against a 2600-rated Sergei Davlatov, extremely a strong player. So Magnus begins with the first move knight to f3 and he does it for a very specific reason because he was preparing against the dutch defense and that is by the way the bonus tip for you out of this video if you ever want to beat the dutch defense here right there it's the best thing you can do knight f3 f5 and d3 the only purpose of this move is to prepare the move e4 and that leads us to the first principle of this video if your opponent attacks you on the side punch him in the center so black plays here d6 and white immediately goes on with e4. The idea is that, well, the move e5 weakens black's pawn structure, it weakens the king and you need to use it. But the best way to use it is to open up the center completely. Then it's gonna matter that the f pawn is no longer on f7. So knight c3, knight c6 and then e takes f. Magnus Carlsen begins to open up the center, but I hope you're gonna find the best move here for white because it's really what makes a difference. I hope you have found it. The best move for white here is d4. So if your opponent attacks you on the side, don't mess around, hit them in the center. It's like bullseye in darts. Aim for the middle and you're spot on. Black takes here on d4, knight takes, Green takes and that's exactly what white needs to clear the center as much as possible so that there is nothing stopping white from attacking the black skin. Black plays knight f6 and here we are at the second incredibly important principle. Develop all of your pieces as fast as possible and as active as possible. When it comes to moving the pieces, think of it like they're in a hurry for a pizza delivery. There is no time for slow race. It's important to get there fast and hungry. Notice how fast and active Magnus Carlsen develops his pieces. First of all, bishop c4, that is a perfect square for the bishop because no castles is gonna be possible. That means the king is stuck in the center that, it, that makes life so much more miserable for black. Let's see how Magnus uses it. So c6, now bishop to g5, the second bishop comes into play. Once again, very inconvenient for black. The spin, the queen can just go away to castle the king because, well, the knight on f6 is hanging. So black plays b5, trying to get some counterplay. It's very important in chess to get your own counterplay. If you are just sitting there and hoping that nothing wrong is going to happen, well, I have bad news for you. Your opponent is going to come and get the better out of you. So bishop to b3 back of course staying on the diagonal now bishop to e7 seemingly a very normal developing move but the problem is black is just so much slower in terms of the development and the development is the most important thing in the opening and magnus carlsen uses it so now the fastest way to get both rooks into the game is lawn castles and that's a great move as you can see because it saves yet another tempo the king is secure both on the king side and on the queen side but here the rook is already on the d1 exactly where it has to be that helps hugely so queen to d7 and now rook e1 notice that white has developed every one of his pieces whereas black still has both rooks undeveloped and the worst thing is the king is still in the center that makes all the difference in the world objectively white's position is already completely winning here so black played here king to d8 well not the best move so now you can find a brilliant move that magnus execute next pause the video and please take your time because you are gonna enjoy it a lot before i tell you the move here is the third incredibly important principle you're gonna learn today if you have the initiative you must use it if you have the initiative don't just sit on it it's like the last slice of a pizza you have got it so enjoy it before someone else does the brilliant move that magnus carlsen makes here is rook takes e7 so 
The point here is all of our pieces are developed, like I said. So we have to use it right now. We are much more active. But if we let Black to do what he wants to do, somehow secure the king, bring the rooks into the center, we are not going to have any initiative anymore. We are not going to have any advantage anymore because the material is equal. So right now we need to do something active. And rook takes his seven is exactly this move because well, if you take with the kings and you're in big, big trouble, bishop takes, rook e1, queen takes f6, and you're losing pretty much everything. So queen takes e7 is the only move here, but now it gets a little bit tricky because there is no clear way to win immediately. I mean, queen takes d6 is not enough. Never exchange your queens if you have the initiative and you're some material down. It's not the purpose of sacrificing the pieces. And definitely don't do it when your opponent's, is, uh, your opponent's king is very weak. You need to attack it. And for that, you really need your queen. So queen d6 would be a horrible positional mistake here. Instead, white played queen f4, which is a double attack. Not only we attack the bishop here, but we want to take the pawn with our rook and open up the opponent's king. So what happened here is bishop to d7, knight to e4. Well, remember this knight was on c3 here active, but not really doing that much because of this pawn on c6. Well, guess what? Now Magnus uses it and goes to the center and he has so many more active pieces. Remember, it's not about the number of the pieces you have, it's about the number of the active pieces because yes, Black has a pair of rooks, but it doesn't help at all. It's, you can just get rid of it. It still doesn't make any difference. So that is what matters, active pieces. Now, d5 has been played, but knight takes f6, and of course, you cannot take it back because of bishop takes and you lose your queen. So black comes up with the h6 plan, pretty reasonable, just get rid of the uh, bishop first. And also g5 is just a uh, fork here, so it seems like it's not that bad for uh, black. but Unfortunately, that's completely lost, and feel free to pause the video again to find the final blow. There are two great moves that basically lead to the same direction. Knight xd5 immediately, or queen to d4 first. Well, queen to d4 has been played because that's the simplest and probably the best way. You don't need to sacrifice too much if you don't have to. So, now g takes h, knight xd5, that's a double attack. Uh, the queen and the rook are under attack and what's even more dangerous is that the d file is now opened and so mm, black is completely busted takes queen takes h8 and now black resigned because well let's let's consider some options first of all if you go away with the king you, you lose your rook if you try to block the check with the bishop then we can take either with a rook or with a bishop. I guess bishop takes d5 is incredibly strong. It attacks the rook and at the same time it prepares some discovered checks. So queen g5 check, king to b1, rook b8, and now, yeah, queen h7 is completely winning. Basically everything is winning. You can never stop this attack. You can see that from a material point of view, the number of pieces is equal, but each one of the pieces for white is much more active and the king is much more secure than black's king. And in such a situation, you don't need to calculate the variations at all. You just know it's completely winning. If you try to block the check with a queen, on the other hand, well, I can just pick up the pawn once again. The pawn structure is horrible. Everything is weak. White is going to pick up everything. And so black resigned. No hopes for this game at all. In this video, you're going to discover what exactly you need to level up your tactical understanding and finally become a much stronger chess player. So definitely take a look at it.